As we discussed in the first part of this video series, the first stage in a Taguchi's design is the systems design, where we need to apply our process knowledge, our engineering knowledge to determine the right factors, their levels and the right set and order of experiments. So let's start with the static response designs where we are after a nominal the best kind of a scenario a response which has a fixed optimal value like the case of uh, silicon wafers that we discussed in the first part where we are after a optimal coating uh, width of the silicon layer on the wafer now in such cases the process in design is influenced by the control factors and the noise factors you would remember that noise factors are those factors which has got influence on the model but they are not controlled by the user so our objective would be to reduce unwarranted variance induced by the noise factors and obviously control the variance due to input factors and maintain the output mean at the target now this output mean first we will get it to the optimum and then we will maintain the output mean at the target. So to understand the step-by-step -step approach uh, to create the experimental design using orthogonal arrays and linear uh, graph, let us go through a few cases. In the first case, uh, let's say we have to improve the microprocessor yield, uh, which obviously is the output response in a process where silicon microprocessors are being manufactured. The control factors that we will consider are let's say the temperature which would be factor A, the deposition rate of silicon layers would be factor B, pressure as factor C and doping amount as factor D. Let's assume we are considering all these factors at two levels. So the robust design that we need to determine uh, would need a scientific understanding on the main effects of all these factors. In addition to that, we would also like to understand how temperature and pressure are interacting with the deposition rate. So we need to find or study the interaction effects between factors A and B and B and C. So we have decided upon these levels for all these factors. So the table basically summarizes the factor levels. For example, like for temperature, E is the factor with its minus 1 level at 120 degrees Celsius and its level 2 or the plus 1 level at 250 degree Celsius. As we had discussed in the first part of the video, this is a very important critical part when it comes to the Taguchi's design and the choice of these factors is a significant part of this overall designing process. So all the subject matter experts uh, for, for this process must be a part of this decision. Now the first milestone is to determine the number of experimental runs that are required. In experimental designs, ideally, for each level of a factor, we need to conduct one experiment. That's the base for full factorial designs. The Gucci's designs use the degrees of freedom method to determine the number of experimental runs. Degrees of freedom means in how many ways an independent system can vary when a constraint is imposed on it. Now to understand this, let's consider a factor with two levels. Okay, the factor with two levels. These levels are chosen as per the process tolerance, practically. I mean, that's how we do. That is, we uh, write process tolerance as the difference between upper level and the lower level. And in general, we know the tolerance in a process. And based on that, we determine the upper and the lower levels for a two level factor. So based on the tolerance, when we choose the levels in a two level factor, our freedom of choice will be limited to one as the second level must match the tolerance. Now what it means is in this case, 
we know the tolerance so uh, and and uh, we have to decide on uh, the upper level and the lower level so within the operating range we are free to choose the first level let's say we choose the upper level first but the same freedom we do not have to choose the lower level because the lower level has to be upper level minus the process tolerance so for a factor with two levels the degrees of freedom will be 2 which is number of levels in the factor minus 1 so 2 minus 1 equals 1 for each factor level to be estimated we lose one degree of freedom so the generic formula can be written as number of levels minus 1 now coming to the interaction let's say uh, between a and b uh, where both are two level factors degrees of freedom will be levels for a minus 1 multiplied by levels of b minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 equals 1 into 1 which is 1 in this case the total degrees of freedom will be the summation of the degrees of freedom for all factors which in this case will be 6 now the number of experiments to be carried out is given by total degrees of freedom plus 1 this plus 1 is for the response factor so in this example the total number of experiments required would be 6 plus 1 that is 7 this from the conventional design point of view is a drastic reduction in a conventional full factorial design we would have been required to conduct 32 random uh, experiments with replicates next step is to select the appropriate orthogonal array from the orthogonal array tables which allows to run the required number of experiments for the given number of factors at two levels and uh, the array should be greater than the number of experiments so in this case uh, we have to conduct seven experiments now referring to the standard OA table OA is for orthogonal array so referring to the standard OA table the nearest OA is L8 here we can see that for L8 uh, we can have 8 experiments which obviously is greater than 7 uh, it allows for maximum 7 factors and in our case we have 4 factors and it allows for factors at level 2 which is the case with our example as well so that's how we end up choosing L8 orthogonal array now we know the factors their levels number of experiments to be conducted and the orthogonal array that should be used next we need to understand how do we allocate our factors or our factor notations of a b c d to the column numbers of the orthogonal array in uh, such an array each column represents a factor so for this allocation we use linear graphs so we'll start with the required linear graph which should ideally represent which all factors and their main effects we need to study it should also capture which all interactions between specific factors we want to study now in our example we have to study the main effects for the factors a b c and d these would be these factors would be represented by the nodes then we have to study the interaction effects between A and B and B and C. Since interaction effects are shown by edges in a linear graph, we join the nodes A and B to get the interaction AB. Similarly, we will join the nodes B and C to get the interaction BC. So this is how our case will be represented with a linear graph and this we will call a required linear graph next step is to compare the required linear graph with the linear graph that's standard for this l8 orthogonal array this is the standard linear graph for l8 so it allows us to study main effects of four factors and three two-way interactions then we need to match our required linear graph with the 
standard linear graph. So this is the required linear graph and this is the standard linear graph. We modify the standard linear graph by moving out the edge 5 into the node position because we do not want to study uh, the interaction between factors 1 and 4. So this edge is moved to the node position. This modified linear graph is similar to the required linear graph barring an extra column or node which is okay as we can leave out any additional column without any impact on the experimentation. Now finally, we can allocate our factors to the columns of the orthogonal array. Now in order, uh, A goes to the first node, B to the second, C goes to the third node which is actually numbered as 4 and D goes to the next node which is 7. Interaction AB will be confounded in the column 3 it will be represented by column 3 and interaction BC by column 6. The last step is to select the columns from the orthogonal array to get the details on the runs and their order. This is the standard orthogonal array design layout for L8. Now based on our factor allotment of A to 1, B to 2, C to 4 and D to 7, we choose the first, second, 4th and 7th columns from the default array. Now coming to the interactions, in this case we want to study the interaction AB and BC. In the previous slide we uh, allotted AB to column 3 and BC to column 6. We would remember that as per the linear graph the interaction between 1 and 2 is represented by the column 3 of the array which means the effects of 1 and 2, the factor 1 and factor 2 are getting confounded in column 3. So if we want to analyze this interaction independently, we must leave this column out. So that's the reason we leave out column 3 and 6 as they represent the confounded interaction of column 1 and 2 and column 2 and 4 respectively. Before we move forward, let's understand how column 1 and 2 is getting confounded in column 3. On the screen, what you see here is the same L8 interaction layout. Uh, what we have done is we have taken column 1, 2 and column 3 from the standard layout. For ease, level 2 is shown as minus 1. To represent the interaction of column 1 and 2, uh, we multiply their levels. So 1 into 1 is 1. 1 and 1 is 1, we have minus 1 here, minus 1 here, minus 1 here, minus 1 here, here minus 1 into uh, minus 1 is plus 1, again we have plus 1 here. You would see that these uh, confounded levels are the same as column 3. That is the reason when we want to study the interaction between column 1 and 2, we should avoid duplication by not assigning column 3 to any factor. Taguchi uh, also gives standard interaction tables for different uh, orthogonal arrays. These standard interaction tables can be used to find the confounding columns. For example, this is the interaction table for L8 orthogonal array. Both columns and rows in this table are denoting the column arrays. The numbers that we had seen in the standard layout, column 1, column 2 and so on. And here we can see column 1 and column 2 are getting confounded in column 3. 